Welcome to Design Domination, where you'll gain confidence, clarity, and a competitive edge in a crowded marketplace so you can dominate your competition. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Colleen Grotzer, and in this episode of Design Domination, I'm joined by my good friend John Falk to talk about Google reviews. Stick around to hear what Google reviews did for John's business, how they can help your business, and how you can get started with them. John Falk, a.k.a. Johnny Flash, is the founder and CEO of Johnny Flash Productions, a web and digital marketing agency near Washington, D.C., and he's created a six-step proven hiring method that includes a tailored trial project to find the best candidate. Johnny is a coach for Agency Mavericks, formerly known as WP Elevation, where he helps agency owners grow their business, nail down their processes, and expand their team. He's also the creator of Amplified Impact, which is a six-week church communication course. He's also an Adobe certified expert in Photoshop. I don't remember knowing that. (laughs) And he's been using WordPress for over a decade. John's married to Julie, the real superhero, and they have four kids, Jeremiah, Elias, Alicia, and Sammy. Welcome to the podcast again, John. It's great to have you back. (laughs) Thanks. That's quite the intro, Colleen. Thank you so much for having me. So great to be back on and good to just get to catch up with you. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, before we talked about how you went from a two-person business to one with now a very large team, (laughs) and that was a great conversation. Yeah, yeah, it was it was fun, and I think I can't remember exactly when you recorded that, but the team I'm sure is bigger now. But <laughs> it probably we, is. Yeah, we have about there's 16 of us now on the team, so it's it's been it's been going great. Wow. Yeah. So it was it was in back in February, so it's been almost a year. Okay. Yeah, we had probably nine of us, ten of us then, or something. Wow. I think we've hired six this year. Every time I talk to you, you have a bigger team. (laughs) (laughs) So as always, we'll start with a couple of fun questions first. And the first one is, would you rather go deep sea diving or bungee jumping? Oh, man, that is hard. The deep sea diving sounds pretty awesome. I've Mm -hmm. um, I haven't bungee jumped before, but I did jump out of a perfectly good airplane in Hawaii (sighs) and did skydiving. So I've probably probably the deep sea diving would be like something totally different that I haven't done. So I'd probably go for that. Oh, wow. Did Julie jump out of a plane too? She did. She actually, <gasps> uh, crazy, when we when we met, she actually had her pilot's license, her solo license. She can fly a plane. I've always joked if we're like on a plane going somewhere and like the captain like falls dead or something, I'm going to push her up to the front to try to save us. But um, oh my God. She, so she actually has wanted to jump out of a plane for a long time. As we were going up on the plane, this is going to be crazy, but like we were engaged at the time uh, when mm-hmm. we, were, we were in Hawaii and we were on this trip and I would have chickened out um, if she hadn't been along. Cause like you're flying up the hatch is open. So like literally you could just like fall out of the plane at any time. You're not strapped to anyone while you're going up in the plane. You're just sitting on this bench, oh, no. like the big hole right there. <laughs> um, the guy that I was strapped to was like muttering things about, you know, Hey, I want to end my life today. And I just don't have any purpose to live and all this, like totally trolling me. But like, he played it so well that I was like nervous that like, we were just going to jump out of this plane and like no parachute was going to come out. So I was like terrified. Uh, Julie was there though. And she was so excited about it. I couldn't back out because, you know, I, I didn't want to like, I wanted to impress her. So long, long story, but, um, yeah, that was pretty crazy. She was excited about it though. Wow, I didn't know about any of that. That's really funny. Well, you know, I I have I am very phobic of planes. I've been in planes, I've flown a few times. I am never getting on one again. They're too much. <laughs> Actually, we've been watching a lot of too many things about why planes crash on YouTube mm-hmm. recently. Oh, that's and... that's not gonna be good. Yeah. <laughs> so that like seals the deal there. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's interesting. Okay, so the other question is what software or app can you just not live without? Hmm. You know, we started, uh, and this will be good for designers because I'm sure a lot of people listening are using this, but we just, we switched to Figma a few years ago for like all of our web design. And it's just so great because there's no like sharing the files, you know, it's like people can work on it at the same time. The developers love it. It's faster to export than like Photoshop. So I don't know. We've just, I, I think Figma would be something I just couldn't live without. Hoping that, uh, I think Adobe, did they just buy them? I'm hoping they don't screw it up or whoever just bought them. I'm hoping they don't screw it up. Yeah. A lot of people are concerned about that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
Okay, so today we're talking about Google reviews, and I know you have tons of them, and I know you have this wonderful process to get them. So the first question I want to ask you about, though, is like, what prompted you to even think about getting Google reviews in the first place? Yeah, I mean, uh, I quit my day job seven years ago to kind of go full time, and um, I woke up. It was like early 2018. I had just watched a webinar. I think it was Simon Kelly interviewing oh. uh, Phil Singleton. It was back in the mm -hmm. WP Elevation days. Um, Phil's written a number of books and on SEO and he runs Kansas city web design and SEO. And he was just talking about like how important Google reviews are. And I hadn't really given it any thought. We had built all these different websites and stuff over the years and had zero Google reviews. So I was like, oh man, I should probably, you know, see if I can get some. So I basically set a goal, um, to try to get 50 Google reviews in three months. It was like ambitious, but I was like, I'm just going to ask every single person I know. The good thing with Google reviews is they don't necessarily have to be someone who's spent money on you. It could just be someone who can vouch that you do good work, right? So, um, you know, whether you or I have like done business together or not, like I can vouch that you know your accessibility stuff and I could leave you a review. You could leave me a review saying like I do quality web design, even though we're not necessarily like customers, right? Mm -hmm, sure. Um, so I just started asking everybody. I mean, I like, you know, everybody that had we'd ever done work for before anyone who knew, could vouch that I did good work. And so I was just asking, 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 and we didn't quite get to our goal of um, 50 in three months. I think we got to like 46 or something, Oh, um, still. Mm -hmm. but we were like very mm -hmm. close. Um, and, and I was like, wow. And so then it was interesting, you know, the results that you start to get when, you know, and the exposure you start to get when you get Google reviews. Well, so where were you ranked before you started collecting Google reviews versus after you started getting Google reviews? I mean, we weren't really ranked in terms of like, I mean, I guess we might've had a few pages that showed up in a you know particular search, but like in terms of our, um, it was at the time it was the Google, my business. Now it's called Google business profile at, you know, like we wouldn't have shown up because I mean, who wants to, who wants to buy the product on Amazon that has no reviews and has no, you know, right. no, no track record. We skip those. Right. Right. Nobody wants to be the first. <laughs> no, nobody wants to be, no one wants to be even the third or the fourth or the fifth. They want to be like the thousandth or the, you know, 150th person. They don't want to be, you know, the Guinea pig. Well, so besides exposure, or besides having good things to say, why was it important to get Google reviews specifically? Like as opposed to other reviews, why Google reviews? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, so WhiteSpark um, put out a kind of, they, they do an annual search ranking factors um, kind of report. And it's been, they've been doing it for a number of years now. And it's been interesting to see how like local pack and finder rankings have continually shifted more and more toward the Google business profile and reviews. Like I think in their 2021 um, results, you know, between Google business profile and reviews, it was like over 50% of the determination of whether you fit into that local pack, Mac pack and like local searches was based on just those two things. And then on page was like way down at number three and links was number four and other things were further down. So now that's a little bit different than local organic ranking factors where on page and links and a lot of that stuff still matter a lot, you know, if you're trying to search for those, but in terms of like showing up in the map and as a local company and that kind of thing, it's a huge determination. So I think you get the most, my experience has been, you get the most mileage with your reviews if they're on Google um, you don't get much mileage anymore on Facebook because even your Facebook page business follow, you know, your followers of your Facebook business page, they rarely even see your posts. Even if you yeah. post on there, you know, you have 500 Facebook business page followers and five of them see your post because Google has really de-emphasized, uh, you know, pages. So, you know, I if mean, you Facebook have a, has. yeah, and, yeah, I'm Facebook sorry. Facebook has, has. sorry. I, I said the wrong thing. Yes. Facebook has. Um, if you have some kind of industry specific website, some of those still do all right. Like if you're a service business and you're off, you know, and you're on Angie's list and you have a bunch of reviews or home advisor and stuff like that. But most of our audience obviously is designers and developers and that kind of stuff. So, you know, you're going to get the most mileage on Google. 
Okay, so the factors in the Google search ranking, you're saying so reviews are part of it, and then your on-page SEO, and then your hyperlinks? Yeah, and your Google business profile, which obviously the reviews are on there, but you can also choose like your primary categories and write a description and share photos. And like you can even if you're posting on social media, you can add your Google business profile as like another place that your social posts go out. So then it's pulling in all that content of your recent blog posts and other stuff. So that Google business profile reviews on page and links. Like if you can, if you can get those four things working for you, you're going to be that, that that's like the stuff that they care the most about. So how did you go about approaching clients to get Google reviews? Because you know, it's, it can be really hard. It can be hard enough just to get a testimonial from them. And mm -hmm. then, you know, and the other thing too, is that a lot of times, you know, we designers will forget to ask for the testimonial, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. when we know the client's, you know, happy with the job we just did. So we have these two different things that work against us. So how did you first go about approaching clients to get these Google reviews? So I think the first step to take is to just make a list of everybody you could ask, because if you separate the making the list and making the ask, it's a little bit easier, right? Today, just make the list of here's 20 people I could ask tomorrow, say, I'm going to ask five of them. And then mm -hmm. maybe in a few days, I'm going to ask five more or whatever. You don't want to, you don't want to ask 50 people or a hundred people or everyone on your email list today to leave your review. Cause Google doesn't like it. If you've never had any Google reviews or you've barely gotten any, and then all of a sudden, you know, Colleen got 12 reviews today. That's going to look like you're gaming the system, right? Oh, really? So do you want it oh. to be more organic than that? Right? So what I would say is make a list of everybody you could possibly ask, starting with like recent clients and people that love you and ongoing clients and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, friends who can vouch for you. And then maybe on your future list, you've got clients we're working with right now, but like we're still building their website or doing their design project or whatever. So we're like, I'm not going to ask them in the middle of the project. I'm going to wait till we finish the thing right. and then <laughs> ask them. And then I just whether they prefer email or text or whatever is kind of their mode of communication. I would, I just usually my awesome ask email is hi, Colleen. I hope you're having a great week. I was wondering if you could take a moment and leave a review on Google about working with us. This is the URL and there's places you can go um, where you can basically get the exact URL. So when they click on it, it's going to pop up on your Google business profile with the stars so that they can literally just click it and fill it out. Um, so I'd put that link in there. And then I say it'll only take 30 seconds. Writing something is optional. And then I always I always put a goal in there. So it sounds like they're trying to help me reach a goal. So I say, hey, we're trying to get to X number of Google reviews. So if you're at 12 Google reviews right now, you might say, hey, we're mm -hmm. trying to get to 25 Google reviews. And then say, we're almost there. And then I just say, thanks. And, you know, and I just send it to them. Um, and I think the writing stuff is optional is huge because sometimes they get, you know, hesitant in what to say. Another way you can go about it is you can say, without asking them for a review, you can just say, Hey, uh, it was great working with you on this project last year. We had a lot of fun doing it. I was wondering like, you know, how could you just tell me how it was working with us? Is there anything we could improve? And then typically they'll justify their purchase. So they'll typically speak well of you unless they had a really terrible experience. They'll say, Oh man, it was so great. We tell everyone about you that you did our website. Like we really liked how you walked us through whatever the site map or the design mock-ups or whatever the thing is that they really liked. Um, it was great. So if they, if you have any email like that from anyone, the easiest thing is to then say, Hey, thanks so much for the kind words. Would you mind copying and pasting this into our Google business profile? That's like super easy. Cause then they don't have to think about what to say. They've already said it, right? Um, one time I had a guy call and he said, Hey, John, I was just calling to say thank you. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, you know, that website you built for us, you know, a few months ago, I've been getting, he said, two to five leads every single day that lead to business for my, for my company. And I just wanted to say, thank you. Like what you did worked. And I'm like, so appreciative. And then I was like, I was like, trying not to cut him off, but I was like, would you, like, that is so awesome. I'm so happy for you. Would you mind just typing what you just said into our Google business profile? Because that's like an amazing review. And so then sure enough, like he did that. 
and we got the review and you know it was amazing because he wrote that exact same thing on our google business profile and he's a customer of ours right it's just sometimes being intentional like when you get the positive feedback to just or if you have to do something as a favor for someone like you've had that time where like you kind of did a consultation you didn't get paid for it you realize you should have got paid for it the call that was supposed to be 15 minutes was an hour they're like oh man i like i i need to pay you something for this because it's been so helpful what i'll just say is hey well actually why don't you just leave me a review that would be super awesome like that's a way that you can pay me and say thank you is just like hey just leave a review of what you what you just said great idea so you can turn those like little favors you do for somebody a friend or some old client or whatever that you're not going to charge them for into a review well, that's a great way for designers to take advantage of that because designers are notoriously known for doing mm -hmm. favors too many mm -hmm. times. So mm -hmm. that is a very good way to alleviate that situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get something in return. <laughs> so I just, you know, I would make the list. I'd ask a certain number of people per week. Don't ask all 20 this week, ask mm -hmm. five this week, ask five next week. And, you know, just kind of brainstorm more names. And so then you can just kind of get in a rhythm. Hey, every uh, Tuesday morning, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to email five people asking for a Google review, you know, and that's just, you just make it part of your routine. Then what we, what you do is once you get caught up, then you build into your process as you're building a website or you're doing that design project or whatever, you just have somewhere near the very end of the process, ask them for the review. Right. And so after the website's launched and you've, you've done all your post launch stuff or whatever, then it's like, Hey, send the client this email asking for the review. And you just sort of build it into your, your process, the impact, you know, after we got even just that initial reviews, you know, Google sends you the email. It says like, Oh, your views on the map are up like 176%. And all these people are finding you through discovery now and stuff because you've, you know, gotten these reviews, you show up in the map pack, um, and, you know, all that. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I have a feedback page where I have clients, they can, is a form that clients can fill out and they can mm -hmm. submit the, like a testimonial right there. And then I ask mm -hmm. things like, you know, what could we have improved on or, you know, how was your experience, whatever. But I also have then a link to go to the Google review page or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. they could leave it there, but sometimes they, you know, cause I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't even have the form there. Just send them to Google reviews because then I could copy and paste the Google reviews onto my site, you know, mm -hmm. potentially. Mm -hmm. So that might make it easier instead of like, Hey, do this and do that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it all depends obviously for designers and developers and people that are generally probably listening to this, they probably have a pretty close working relationship with their clients so it, the likelihood of getting a bad review, it's not that you couldn't get one. It's just that you're probably going to know and hopefully you're going to be smart enough not to <laughs> ask them, you know, versus <laughs> like if it's if you're helping a client that's like a restaurant or something like that and they're trying to get reviews. Obviously, all it takes is like one little stray hair that not, might not have even been someone who worked at the restaurant. It could have even been your own hair somehow got in there. You didn't recognize it as your own hair. And you're like, <laughs> oh, there's hair in my food. This is awful. I'm leaving a one star review and you like storm out of there. Right. Um, so in those situations, like if you can kind of like preemptively, you know, kind of find out, you know, the experience before you're asking for it, then that can be helpful. But you also have to be careful. Google kind of generally frowns on they call it gating your reviews where basically like i'm only gonna you know if someone leaves me a negative comment i'm not gonna send them to google and if they leave me a positive i am it's kind of like gating you know the negative feedback which then it just looks like you know you only only the positive ones go there so generally that's like frowned upon um so you just have to kind of use your your judgment on that, but I don't I understand. How, so how would you do that? I don't, I don't get that. Like, unless somebody tells you beforehand what, if it's going to be positive or negative, like how does Google know? Like, you know, how, how are they going to know? How does that work? Well, so you can set up what's called a review funnel and you can turn on gating if you want. So the way that it would oh. work is you, you'd send all of your clients when you finish a project, like, Hey, thumbs up or thumbs down on the, how the project went. Right. If they do thumbs up, then it says, Hey, would you be willing to like, leave us a review on Google? We're so thankful that, you know, we'd love working with you. If you say thumbs down, the form pops up right on your web page that says, Oh, I'm so sorry that we didn't meet your your expectations or whatever, please let us know how we can improve it. And then they just fill out that form. It goes to you as an email, but they never get asked to go to Google. So that's kind of like gating your, your feedback because you're only sending the people who say that they had a good time 
onto the review page. But that whole process is only with you. That's independent of Google until they click through to Google, right? Right, right. But Google okay. kind of frowns on that because obviously mm -hmm. if everybody did that, you would pretty much only have the positive people or the people who went really out of their way to like leave comments, um, you know, would show up. So you just have to kind of be careful with that kind of stuff. Well, so speaking of negative reviews, what do you think designers should do if they happen to get a negative review? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, inevitably, it comes that you get the negative review, right? So uh, I always think it's good to try to reply publicly, whether it's positive or negative, because Google will also use your review as more SEO material, right? So if it was a good review, you can say, hey, we loved working with you on this web design project and your <laughs> SEO and whatever other like buzzwords you're trying to get in there, right? And, and, and just thank them. So that's good. It looks like you're interactive, you care, you're active in your business, like you noticed, right? So that's good. But if it's negative, you still want to reply publicly and say, I usually say acknowledge the issue first. So, hey, I'm so sorry that this project took longer than we said that it would. Like this is not, you know, I, then I would apologize. Um, we're really sorry that it caused delays and that your website was um, slow to get, you know, launched or whatever was behind schedule. Uh, and then I would restate our values. One of our values is whatever fits, you know, uh, one of our values is to whatever, exceed customer expectations or whatever. And I know that we failed on that this time, but we're working to, and we've, and then maybe we've made these changes in our process to ensure that like, you know, this doesn't happen again. And if you need to resolve it, I would offer it offline. Right. So if they said, um, I can't believe you did this. Like, I feel like, you know, I should get a partial refund because you didn't deliver on what you promised or whatever the thing was, then I would say, Hey, I'm really, I would say all those things and then say, Hey, I would love to connect with you so we can make this right or, or talk this through, like, please email us at this or, you know, contact us or whatever. Because then if someone who's like, you know, rational is reading this negative review, right? And then they see the owner um, acknowledging the issue, apologizing, restating their values and offering to resolve it, like that looks pretty good, right? Yeah. You had hair in your food. You were, you couldn't believe it that the food was this way. And then the owner comes on and says, I'm so sorry. Like, this is not normal for us. Like there was, you know, we had some new employees that day and I'm not making excuses. They need to be trained better, but we've adjusted our training practices and made sure everyone has their hair nets or whatever the thing is. Like we would love to, we would love to make this right so that, you know, you can come back again on us or whatever please contact me at this like that looks pretty good as like yeah. a response right yeah because when i'm checking out i mean i'm always looking at reviews i look at yeah. reviews all over the place i look at google reviews i mean i might look at yelp reviews i'll look at the better business bureau reviews and ratings i mean you can, and i've even seen where people have had like companies have had a better business bureau rating that was really good like a or b and then they have these horrible reviews that mm -hmm. have scared mm -hmm. me away so reviews are very important and i do appreciate when a company does respond to, well, to all reviews, to any type of review, but especially when they respond to negative reviews, because it maybe sometimes it just wasn't a good fit, right? It wasn't anybody's mm -hmm. fault. It yeah. just wasn't a good fit, right? Or somebody didn't have, somebody had higher expectations or mm -hmm. their expectations weren't in line mm -hmm. with what the project scope was. I mean, things can come up. So it happens. So and nobody's perfect. So I do always appreciate seeing that someone's taking time to address that because otherwise I just feel like they're really not that concerned about the mm -hmm. service that they're providing. So when I do see that and they're saying what you just said, I'm like, okay, I can, I, I can understand that. Yeah. 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 And then I think once you get those testimonials, you can use them on all kinds of things, right? You can put some of them on your website. You can feature some of those on a social post. You can feature them in your newsletters, like all different kinds of ways you can use those reviews. So it's not like you spend the effort to get them. It helps you be more visible, but then you can also use those in other ways to like build authority and, and to get more, you know, potential customers. Yeah. They definitely build trust. Well, what have, well, how do you approach it if you have clients that have already left your reviews elsewhere? Like, for example, I have tons of testimonials that are on my website, but they're not Google reviews. So do you mm -hmm. ever ask 
you know, clients that you've worked with in the past, hey, this is what you said before. Would you mind copying and pasting this into a Google yeah. review? Like, what do you do? <laughs> it's one of the easiest reviews you can get because if you take the time to say, hey, Colleen, thanks. So it was so great to work with you last year. Um, thanks for leaving us that review on Facebook. Like that's really helped us out or wherever it is, on, you know, for emailing me that message, whatever. Would you be willing to take 30 seconds and copy and paste it onto our Google business profile? We're trying to get to 50 reviews, whatever. We're almost there. Um, here's, and then this would mean the world to us. Thanks so much, John. And then I would just copy and paste exactly what they said there. So they don't have to go look for it. Right. They don't have to go try to find it. Remember whatever. I mean, who, I mean, almost anyone who like gives any ounce of like care or respect for you is going to take the time to do that. Right. It's not a, it's not a big ask. Um, so yeah, I've done that a lot. You know, some of the times when we were using like platforms like Thumbtack or Bark or something, and I like, I had a bunch of Google reviews, but it'd be really helpful if I had 10 or 12 or 15 of those over there. So I just, who do I have enough equity with that I can just go and ask that and I'll just copy and paste and you know, they're willing to do it. At what point do the, do the clients actually get this funnel about the reviews? Like, is it after you've invoiced, before you've invoiced? I mean, obviously you want to get them when they're still giddy with excitement about yeah. working with you, right? But like, do you have a certain time frame that you send it out or a certain stage in the process when you send that out? I think it's whenever you know that they're generally the most excited. So for us, you know, if we're building a website and it's been like a week or two after launch, we've worked out any little kinks. They're starting to like tell friends about it. They've been getting feedback. Oh man, the website looks amazing. Like all of that kind of stuff. Like that's when you want to ask for the review. So yeah, typically they've already paid the final invoice. We've launched the site. It's probably hasn't been 30 days since the website launched, but it probably wasn't like the day after it launched. It was probably like a few weeks after they've gotten some feedback, some, some good vibes, you know, from people who have looked at the website. And like, that's when I want to ask them, you know? Um, so yeah. And you can kind of, that same with the design project, right? Like as soon as you hand them the design project, not necessarily everybody sees it. So wait till it like is used, you know, the, the booklets handed out at the conference or whatever, and they get all this great feedback. Like that's when you would want to ask them, you know, for the review. So that's the ideal. But again, if you're going back to old clients, you can just say, Hey, I, you know, I know we worked with you last year, a couple of years ago. Um, it's been great to stay in contact with you and just, would you be willing to do this? Okay. I, so I know that Google reviews have helped your business. And you were saying earlier that you weren't even like ranking before mm -hmm. in the, initially. Right. So, I mean, where are you, do you know where you're ranking now? Like, and how has that helped that you're, if you're ranking higher? Yeah. I mean, I think we have 130 Google reviews or something like that. I mean, for a web agency, we pretty much have the most in DC, Virginia, and Maryland. I, I'm kind of like, uh, <laughs> I, I keep track a little bit too much, I guess. It's like I was going to say. <laughs> it's, it's like a scoreboard kind of thing, but um, it really does. It really has made a huge difference because now this is what happens. Like it's, it's like on Amazon, right? I use Amazon all the time. I go on there. I don't know if I don't know which product I'm already going to buy. I'm looking up the reviews on the dehumidifier or the, whatever the thing is that I don't buy that frequently. People don't buy a website that often. They do it once every five years or whatever. Right? So it's not like they have like a whole list of like, Oh, I'm going to go use them. They might not have had a great experience. They need something new. They don't know where to go. So unless they have a friend tell them, oh, you should go talk to Colleen because she does amazing accessibility and design work. Unless someone says that, then they're just going to go on Google and they're going to say web designer near me or web designer in Fairfax or in Maryland or whatever the thing is. Right. And so then if you come up and they're looking at, oh, wow, Johnny Flash has 130 reviews. Well, this other agency has 23 reviews. Like it says it, it just, it's kind of like that product on Amazon that only has a few reviews. It just doesn't seem that great. Right. So we literally will get people that like find us on Google. We had someone come to us. They said, um, we've seen that you're the best web designer around and we want to work with you. Just, that was it. Wow. There wasn't like, they didn't get all these quotes, whatever. And so that's a 15, $20,000 project that just, we got because it's not that we are the best, but we look like we're the best, right? It doesn't mean that we make the best websites or whatever, but in terms of an online reputation, it looks like we're the top dog. We're not the biggest. We're not the best. You know, we haven't been around the longest, but it, in terms of our online reputation, it looks like we're the best. So we get a lot of business just because of that. 
I mean, I know you're awesome. <laughs> I can vouch for that. Well, so do they ever say like, hey, I looked at your Google reviews and oh and, yeah, you know, they do mention them. Okay. Oh, they'll mention the Google reviews or they read this blog content or whatever it was. Um, you know, and so I, I, I'm trying to be real specific about like our quote form. If they go for a quote, it says, how did you hear about us? Um, if I didn't, if they don't fill it out, I'll ask them, you know, or if they just call us or something. So, um, yeah, but it's definitely, you can definitely tell that, um, a lot of people have read them or found you because, or want to work with you because you're, you know, better than most of the other ones around. So, and, and don't be discouraged, right? We had zero in February of 2018. We have more than pretty much every agency in Virginia, DC, Maryland. So it's, you can just, it's just a little bit at a time. It's like anything that, that you get good at. It's not like you overnight become this thing. It's just, you say, Hey, if I get, you know, two reviews every week for the rest for 2023, I'm going to have a hundred reviews and I'll probably only have to ask eight or 10 people a week and I'll get you know, a couple of reviews from that. Um, and then we'll be in a much different place. So just little, you know, little bite at a time. Now, if they don't respond to you and you know, you just don't hear back from them after you send that message or if they say, Oh yeah, Hey, I'll get to that. They never do. Like, do you follow up with them after a certain period of time? Uh, I'll usually send one follow up. I'll, you know, I'll usually just say, Hey, um, you know, we're, we're almost, we've gotten to this, we're almost there or whatever. And just like, Hey, if you have a moment, this would be awesome. This would really help us out, you know, or whatever. Or if they say, Hey, I'll get to that next week. Um, then what I do is I don't reply to there. I'll get to it next week until next week. And yeah, I just I say, do that kind Hey, of thank too. you so much. That's going to be so helpful. Like whatever, whatever. Um, we have found a couple things. If they say they leave a review and it doesn't show up, mm -hmm. then oftentimes, um, Google has filtered it. And a lot of times they'll filter it if they put a web address in the review. So sometimes the client will say, Hey, Colleen did an amazing job for us on our website. And then they put the website URL. She did our Google and our SEO and our blah, 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 blah. And then like, they're like, yeah, I left you the review. And you're like, I don't see it or whatever. And sometimes it's just a few day delay of Google publishing it, but then other times it never shows up. And so you might just say like, Hey, could you copy and paste? Like, cause they can see it for themselves. It looks like they left the review on there, but for everybody else, no one sees it. So just ask them to copy and paste it to you. Look for that flag kind of thing. Like they, they listed a domain name or a web address in there or something. And then I just said, Hey, could you remove that? I think Google's flagging it cause it's not showing up and then it solves it. Okay. So they can't go back and just take it out. They can't edit that. review. Yeah. They can edit it. They oh, can they go could. in and edit. Yeah. So if they go in and edit it and then take that out, then like the next day it just magically appears. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Well, so you actually take this all a step further though, and you provide Google reviews as a service to your clients for their businesses. Yeah. We try to, yeah, we try to help businesses get more reviews for their business. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of the review funnel thing, but really the, the trick is to just ask enough. So like we have a client that takes a lot of online mobile orders for their restaurant, right? So they have the email address for all those people. So as long as they have in their terms or their sign up thing, like, Hey, we can email you occasionally, right? Then we, you could just easily export everybody who ordered this week. And you could just put them into an email campaign and say, Hey, thanks so much for your order this week. We hope everything you know, went well, whatever. We'd love for you to leave us a review. In that case, the restaurant might say, Hey, we should probably like send them to some kind of funnel because we know that there's going to be someone who got the wrong order by mistake or whatever, and is going to leave us a negative review. So they might risk, you know, Google caring and just say, Hey, we're going to send a review funnel and then try to pass on as many of those good ones to, to leave a review. So it typically works best for businesses that have a lot of complaints, right? So the, the long wait at the doctor's office, the, the, the hair in the food or the wrong order of the food or whatever, the cold food, whatever. Um, though typically it's businesses with a physical location who have a high volume of customers. So they're not spending a lot of time with them. Um, and there's a good chance they could mess up every once in a while on accident. Right. Um, those are kind of the best for like a review funnel type of product. Uh, most I'd say designers and agencies and stuff, hopefully you're working with your clients well enough. You're going to know whether they had a good experience and whether to ask them to like leave you a review and you probably don't have a high volume. So you don't really necessarily need a funnel. So we, when we first started doing it, we did have a funnel. We realized it was just an extra step. Everyone was leaving us a good review. We didn't need to like have a, a pre-step before the review. So, well, that's good because that's an interesting way to actually add value 
and charge more for websites mm-hmm. that you build. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you, even if you don't do that, you could always do like a Google business profile, uh, optimization where you say, Hey, for this amount of money, we're going to go in, we're going to make sure you have the right categories, a good description. We're going to make sure everything's kind of filled out as completely as possible. Your logos on there, the photos of your products and stuff are on there. Like just, you know, it's like anything, the more it's filled out and the more comprehensive it is, the better it's going to do. Right. So you could offer that as a service and then you could either build them some links or give them some email templates to like ask their clients. Or you could say, Hey, send us like we have a, a client that sends us their clients every week into our support desk. And then we drop it into their thing and they all get an email that, you know, Mm. asks them for the review and stuff. So you can add value in a lot of different ways, you know, depending on how much help you want to be with that or not. Well, speaking of images on that profile, you can actually add portfolio images on. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have your work right there for mm-hmm. people to see before they even click through to your website. Yeah. And you can probably add a description for all those. So you can say, hey, this is a home healthcare website that we built for blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and so then when people are searching for home healthcare web design, like your image pops up, your business profile, all your reviews. Um, so, and you can, obviously you can get real advanced with it. Like if you were coaching your client, your customers, your clients on what to say, obviously putting in buzzwords like, home healthcare website design and SEO Mm -hmm. and all that stuff is going to be better than if they just say, Oh, Johnny and his team are great. And we love working (laughs) with them and we highly recommend them. Like that's good, but it's not as good as like something that has some of the keywords in it. Like, could you please mention the social media marketing that we did for you? Because it seems like that campaign is doing really well. And I'd love for you to just talk about that, you know, and then they're putting in some of those buzzwords that maybe you're, you care about. So. I need to check out mine now. <laughs> yeah, I should pull it up and see. Yeah, <laughs> Mine's been neglected for quite some time. Yeah, I've got to uh, get on the ball with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I did upload, many years ago, I did upload some portfolio images to it. But yeah, I need to get on the ball with that at some point. <laughs> well, you've got a five-star average. So you're you're doing um, you're doing pretty good there. You just, I am you knocking can, it out of the park. You can just boost up your quantity a little bit and yeah. you'll be set. But I have to pace myself. <laughs> yeah, pace yourself. <laughs> Don't ask them all this afternoon. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, this has been great, John. This has been really interesting to talk about. I think a lot of designers probably don't think about this as much as they should be, as especially as an easy way to, you know, boost their their exposure online. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think it's 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 like one of the lowest hanging fruit, honestly. It doesn't cost anything. Um, it just takes a little bit of time and intentionality. And what we've seen is it's been it's been probably the most effective marketing thing out of everything that we've done, just in terms of like return on investment. We, it takes a little bit of time and we've gotten a lot of result from it. So um, I think it's a great option for designers and developers and agencies, freelancers. I mean, if anyone has any questions they want to talk, you know, they're happy to reach out to us at johnnyflash.com is our website. We're in the middle of redesigning. I'm so excited. It oh, you probably- are? It won't probably launch till the end of January, but we had all of our uh, US team. We did a photo shoot at like four different locations in one day. It was awesome. So we've got all this great like team photography and talking with clients and stuff that we're going to put on oh, there. Cool. Um, and and I, from our previous conversation, you know, we have the hirerockstar.org. If someone's looking to build a team or have someone help them, you know, with their client work, design or otherwise, um, we've got some great resources on there for kind of building your team as well. Yes, and I have followed your process. I know several other people who have followed that process and it works great. Awesome, awesome. That's so great to hear. Thanks. All right, well, thanks for coming on the podcast, John. Thanks, Colleen. It's been a pleasure. If this content was helpful, you can support the podcast by buying me a coffee. It might actually end up being a glass of wine or some tea, but you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash creative booth.